Here we have two resources. We'll pretend each one is a row in the database. We'll call them resource one and resource two. My transaction will come along and get a lock on resource one. Then Jamie's transaction will come along and get a lock on resource two. Then my code will want to access and get a lock on resource two. And Jamie's code will want to get a lock on resource one. And together we're deadlocked. Neither of us can move forward. We're both blocked by the other. One of my personal pet peeves is when there's a tie score in a football game and the sports announcer says the teams are deadlocked at 7-7. That's totally bogus. They're not deadlocked at all. They're just tied. A deadlock is when both sides are waiting for the other and you really are locked and can't get out of it. It's like a fatal embrace kind of situation. So in a deadlock, there's one resource, we'll call it A, and a second resource, we'll call it B. And process one has an exclusive lock on A and wants to get a lock on B. But process two already has an exclusive lock on B and is wanting to get a lock on resource A. So both of them have to wait for the other to finish to continue. And so since neither one of them can continue till the other one finishes, they're deadlocked and there's no way out of it. Somebody has to give up. And that's not going to happen in a football game, which is why the sportcasters are bogus when they say they're deadlocked at 7-7. Here's our SPID 52. It's already in OBX Kites database. SPID 53 is in OBX Kites database. And notice that here we're going to update contact, where contact code is 101, and that's the second update over for SPID 53. SPID 53's first update is product for code 1001, and that's the second resource that SPID 52 is going to go for. So we'll start this out by SPID 51 opening a transaction and getting an exclusive lock on resource A. Now We'll open a transaction on SPID 53. It gets an exclusive lock on resource B and wants an exclusive lock on resource A. And it's now having to wait. The part that's waiting for is this update right here. And it's blocked by SPID 52. So at this point, we just have a locking and blocking situation. It's not really a big problem because if transaction 1 goes ahead and does a commit, it would then release its lock on our resource A, and then SPID 52 could continue on. It's only a locking and blocking problem. We're not going to be deadlocked until we end up crossing over on resource B. We want to go ahead and see this deadlock, so I'm going to fire up another tool, SQL Profiler. And we're going to start a trace where we're going to be able to see some deadlocks happen. So, new trace. I'm going to change it to a blank template. Under locks, I'm going to say deadlock graph, deadlock, and run. So if any deadlocks occur, we'll be able to see some information about it in the profiler. So now all the conditions in the monitoring are set up. Let's see a deadlock and see how SQL Server handles this situation where they are really in a fatal embrace. Run the update. I'm going to slide this over so you can see. It says transaction 52 was deadlocked on a lock resource with another process and has been chosen as the deadlock victim. Rerun the transaction. Not very friendly, but about the only way to really handle a deadlock. Because this is an error message, you can actually trap this with a try-catch and then retry this transaction in code, which is probably a cool thing to do. Let's go back and see what Profiler saw about this deadlock. And so here's the deadlock, and then here's the deadlock graph that it created, where it actually shows you some of the information about how there was a key lock and a read lock which is part of a lock for a cluster index. And 52 had an exclusive 
was requesting an update on the RIDLOCK. 53 had an exclusive here and was requesting an update, and they were stuck, and that was the deadlock. So, ways to prevent deadlock? Keep your transactions short and tight, and try to access your resources in the same order. Instead of one store procedure doing A and B and the other one doing B and A, if they both access them as A and B, then you'll just have locking and blocking until one finishes. And then use good error handling in your code. 